that's all right. Hello everybody! So, welcome to Lesson 8 and we will be discussing different accounting concepts and principles that we use in practice. Well, in accounting, hindi lang kasi tayo basta nagre-record ng transactions, then nilalagay natin kung magkano. And uh, actually, we are guided by different concepts and principles that we need to follow. Okay? So, stay with me in this video and let's learn together the accounting concepts and principles that you need to learn and to understand okay so let's start so we have what we call the GAAP or the generally accepted accounting principles generally accepted accounting principles refer to a common set of accounting principles standards and procedures issued by the financial accounting standards board or the FASB well in the Philippines the gap in the Philippines or the generally accepted accounting principles in the Philippines is the PFRS and the PAS PFRS or the Philippine Financial Reporting Standards and PAS, the Philippine Accounting Standards. These are adapted from the IFRS, which is the International Financial Reporting Standards, and IAS, which is the International Accounting Standards. E ano ba yan? Okay, so these PFRSs and PAS are our guiding principles on how to record transactions. Kapag may binili kang ganito, magkano mo siya re-record? Pag ganito yung nangyari, ganito mo siya re-record. Pag ganito naman yung nangyari, ganito mo siya ipapakita. Ganito yung mga information na kailangan ilagay mo sa financial reports, sa financial statements. Okay, so generally accepted accounting principles are our guiding principles as accountants on how we we are able to record transactions appropriately okay well it actually helps uh, for consistency and uniformity of how we report things in accounting okay so we will not dig uh, too deep on that because you will be learning GAAP principles uh, as uh, as the lesson goes forward okay so let's discuss some uh, different accounting concepts first okay the first concept that we will be discussing is the economic entity or accounting entity principle or concept okay so in this concept the personal transactions of the owner are separate from that of the business he or she owns lalagyan natin ng borderline okay Kung ano yung transactions ng business, transactions yun ng business. Kung ano yung transactions ng owner, transaction yun ng owner. Hindi mo siya dapat pagsasamahin together. Okay? So, when the owner spends money for a birthday party ng anak niya at personal niyang pera yun, that is not a business transaction. Okay? Always remember that. And uh, putting it on another note that anything which is happening in the business is not related to what happens personally kung ano yung nangyayari sa may-ari. Okay? Naintindihan? So, the economic entity or accounting entity concept is something that we need to put a border between what happens on the personal life of the uh, owner and the real business transactions of the business he or she owns. Okay? Well, uh, yung owner kasi ng business, lalo na kung sole proprietorship, eh, minsan, wh what happens to him or her on a daily basis is something related to what happens every day in the business. But always remember that the transactions of the owner that are personal will never affect the book of accounts in the business entity. Okay? So that is economic entity or accounting entity principle. Next concept that you need to know is the accrual basis of accounting. In accounting, we record revenue when it is earned and expenses when it happens. Regardless kung kailan mo na-receive ang cash o kung kailan mo or kung kailan ka nagbayad ng cash. Okay? So, for example, if the revenue event happened in January, at na-receive mo lang yung bayad ng customer mo sa'yo ng February, transaction pa rin yun ng January. You need to record that on January. Okay? Even though cash is not yet received. And then, if you have expenses by January, pero nabayaran mo lang din siya February, best example, yung ating mga electric bills, ba? Utility expenses, ba? We usually receive them, but we pay them next month. So, parang ganun din to. Okay? 
we need to record revenue and expense transactions when it happens regardless kung kailan natin na-receive yung bayad sa atin ng customer o kung kailan tayo nagbayad ng mga expenses na meron tayo. Now, anong kabaliktaraan ng accrual basis of accounting? Then, it's the cash basis of accounting. Di na natin ginagamit yon, okay? Kasi, yung timing ng transactions magiging mali, no? For example, nangyari yung transaction January, pero na-receive mo lang yung bayad mo ng customer mo sa'yo, February. February mo re-record yung transaction? Hindi, okay? You're still recorded on January, following the accrual basis of accounting, Okay? We also have the going concern concept. The company will continue in operating indefinitely until the foreseeable future and that the company closure is not imminent. We are looking on the business uh, firm as if it will not close forever. Okay? So going concern principle is something that tells you that don't worry, the business firm is not closing, so you don't need to prepare report, reports as if you are closing. Okay? So, going concern principle is our guiding principle that you record transactions as if there is no closure. Because we don't need to put that in mind. Because our mindset is that the business will continue operating. Okay? We also have the monetary unit concept. Transactions are expressed in a monetary unit of measure. So, in the Philippines, syempre, you will be recording transactions in Philippine Peso. We also have the time period concept in which transactions are summarized and reported at regular time intervals. In actual practice po na ginagawa sa labas, usually nagre-report tayo ng financial reports or financial statements annually, kada taon, okay? Na pwedeng either maging calendar year, which is January 1 of the year, until December 31. And then, pag fiscal year naman, any starting point na hindi January 1, then dadagdagan mo na ang 12 months. May mga ganyan pong company na naka-fiscal year. Hindi man January 1 yung starting point, basta dadagdagan mo ng 12 months, yun po ang fiscal year. Okay? So, our transactions are reported in regular time intervals. Ang tawag po doon, time period concept. Nagre-report tayo regularly. At yung regular reporting natin, meron tayong tamang time frame na sinusunod. At yung tamang time frame na yun ay annually. Okay? I hope you understand. Let's move on to some more accounting principles that we need to learn. First principle is the cost principle. Amounts shown in financial reports are historical cost. Ibig sabihin, kung magkano yung nareceive mong pera o di kaya kung magkano yung pinambili mo ng bagay na yan nung time na yon, yun ang i-record mo. Historical cost. Kahit anong mangyari. Okay? Kahit, bin- ibig sabihin, parang pag nakakita ka ng accounting reports ng 2012, Yun talaga siya kung magkano siya noong 2012. Ganun siya. Okay? Um, we do not adjust it for inflation. Except for hyperinflation. But you will be learning the indicators of hyperinflation in your higher accounting subject. But uh, let's put in mind that we record transactions on how much was it when it happened that time. Okay? Yun lang naman. Historical cost ang ginagamit natin. Okay. We also have the full disclosure principle in which the accountant should include all of the information needed so that the readers of the financial statements will have informed judgments. Ang ibig sabihin ng full disclosure principle, sundin mo kung yung sinasabi sa accounting standards na kailangan disclose or sinasabi sa financial reports. Pag sinabing disclosure kasi pinapaalam mo, sinasabi mo. Okay? So, in accounting, we are required as accountants to disclose everything. Okay? Para malinaw para yung information na nabibigay natin ay sufficient so that the readers of the financial statements can make good judgments and good decisions. We also have the matching principle, matching revenues with expenses to know the profit of the business. Hindi po pwede na maglilista ka lang ng lahat ng kinita mo. Hindi rin pwede na may lista ka lang ng lahat ng ginastos mo. Hindi siya tama, okay? In accounting, we match them together. Ito ang lahat ng kinita ko, revenue. Ito naman, lahat ng ginastos ko, 
expenses. Both of them should be matched together. At yan yung concept ng net income. Pag mas malaki ang revenue mo kesa sa expense, congratulations, kumita ka. Pero pag mas malaki ang expenses mo kesa sa iyong revenue or kinita, I'm sorry, lugi ka. Okay? So, we deal with the matching principle. Hindi lang basta nagre-record ka ng revenue at ng expense. Dapat minamatch mo together para alam mo kung kumikita ka or nalulugi ka. We also have the revenue recognition principle. Recognized revenue when goods are sold or services are rendered regardless of cash receipt. This is related to the accrual basis of accounting. You record revenue when it happens, not when cash is received from the customer. Okay? We also have materiality. In accounting, materiality refers to the impact of an omission or misstatement of information in a company's financial statements on the user of those statements. If it is probable that users of the financial statements would have altered their actions if the information had not been omitted or misstated, then the item is considered to be material. Okay. Materiality, do not put it in a very literal, literal sense. Okay. When we say materiality, it's something about an amount na kunyari nagkamali yung FS. Pagka yung decision mo nagbago dahil dun sa pagkakamali na yon, ibig sabihin the item is material. Okay? If it changes your decision, if it affects your decision because of that error, because of that misstatement, or because of that omission, then parang yung impact niya malaki. So, the amount is material. Or let's put it maybe this way. For a company with a cash of 100 million pesos, an amount of 1,000 pesos might not be too material. Parang you're reading financial reports, 100 million, tapos nalaman mo, ay may kulang pala na 1,000 pesos. Baka yung decision mo, hindi naman masyado magbago kasi hindi ka naman affected dun sa nawalang 1,000 eh. Okay? But I think that when the cash of the business is only 5,000 pesos, tapos may nawawalang 1,000, I think that's already material. Okay? So, there is no actually certain percentage to know that an item is material or not. It's based on sound judgment. It's, it's based on professional judgment that if something is omitted in your your decisions are really changed by that, then I think the item is material. Okay? So that's the concept of materiality. The concept of materiality is usually used in audit, not in accounting. Okay? We also have conservatism. If there are two acceptable alter alternatives in a situation, the accountant chooses the alternative kung saan tayo mas dehado. Okay? Hindi tayo dun sa mas magbe-benefit or mas gaganda yung itsura ng FS. We go on the conservative side. We go kung saan tayo dehado. Okay? Uh, we don't want to look our FS too glamorous. So what we do is we choose the, the uh, alternative na medyo ano tayo. Hindi man dehado but I think uh, something that is that will not make your FS too glamorous. Okay? And then we also have objectivity. Recording and reporting process should be performed with independence which is free from bias. Iiwas tayo sa bias. Ibig sabihin, pag objectivity, ko ano yung nangyari yung transaction, record mo. Yun lang. Wala kang patutungkulan na ibang uh, person or manager or anything. For example, your company knew that a big investor would like to invest in your company. And then, nalaman mo na ganito pala yung gusto niya. Ayan, ganyan, ganyan, ganito. Nalaman mo. Say, chismoso ka. <laughs> okay, nalaman mo. Ngayon, ang gagawin mo ngayon, oh, yung, so, inutusan mo ngayon yung mga accountants mo. Okay, ikaw mismo yung accountant. Gagawin mo. Sige, uh, gagandahan ko yung financial reports ko na naaayon dun sa gusto nung potential investor namin para mag-invest siya sa business namin. Mali yun, Okay. In objectivity, what we follow is honesty. Kung ano yung nangyari, record mo. Kung walang ganon, huwag mo record. Okay? Huwag kang assuming. Pag hindi nangyari, huwag mong uh, basta ganon. <laughs> okay. So, I hope that you understand all of those principles. And uh, we move on to 
the qualitative characteristics of useful financial information. Uh, financial statements should be created with certain quality uh, principles and uh, those characteristics are given to you like this. Okay, the qualitative characteristics of useful financial information is divided into two. We have the fundamental characteristics and the enhancing characteristics. Pag sinabing fundamental characteristics, yun na talaga yun dapat meron siya. Yung enhancing, pagagandahin pa natin lalo. Okay? Let's first talk about the fundamental characteristics. Under fundamental characteristics, we have relevance and faithful representation. An item is considered relevant pag may effect sa'yo. Di ba? Pag affected ka, ibig sabihin relevant sa'yo yun. But uh, putting it very, very formally, an item is relevant if it has both predictive value and confirmatory value. Paano natin masasabi na, na may effect talaga yung information na nilalabas natin on our financial reports? Pag predictive value, because of the items that we reported, we are able to see or predict what can happen in the future. So for example, nakita mo sa financial reports mo, ay yung sales ko parang tumataas lagi ng 10% kada taon. So you can predict maybe we could adjust our operations to be able to accommodate an increase of sales of 10%. Okay? Kung baka naman sinabing confirmatory value, may nangyari dati, tapos nilabas yung financial reports na confirm mo yung nangyari dati. Kunyari, humirap ang buhay. No, kunyari, ganun. Tapos nakita mo, napapansin mo, parang yung sales mo bumababa. Paglabas ng financial reports mo, tinignan mo yung sales mo bumaba nga talaga. Ibig sabihin, na confirm mo kung ano yung nangyari in the past. Okay? So, pag predictive value, we are able to predict what can happen in the future. Pag confirmatory value, you are able to confirm what happened in the past. Only then, you can say that the information is relevant. Bakit? May effect sa'yo. Marami kang nalaman. Marami kang na-predict. Marami kang natutunan. Marami kang na-confirm. Okay? And then we also have faithful representation ng ating financial reports, financial statements. Should be faithfully represented. And to be able to achieve that certain level of faithfulness, it should be complete, neutral, and free from error. Kompleto. Lahat ng transactions na record ng maayos. At lahat ng kailangan disclosure na ilagay. Pagka naman neutral, that is related to our principle of objectivity that we are not looking into any person or party na magiging bias tayo sa ating pagre-record ng uh, transactions. So it should be neutral. Okay? Kung ano lang yung nangyari, yun lang ang ire-record. And then, free from error, dapat ang financial statements natin walang mali. Dapat tamang-tama. Okay? So those are the fundamental principles. We also have these enhancing principles. Yung fundamental principles dapat na-achieve natin yun. Pagandahin natin lalo. We have these enhancing principles. The enhancing principles include V-cut, V-cut, verifiability, comparability, understandability, and timeliness. V-cut yan para hindi nyo nakakalimutan. Sa isa natin, verifiability is... The items in the financial reports or financial statements are verifiable. Paanong verifiable? Pag kinumpute ng isang accountant, dapat, ng isa pang accountant, dapat ganun din yung lalabas. Or, if you want to verify a certain transaction, merong supporting documents that could verify na yun yung nangyari talaga. Okay? Para, pag in-investigate, talagang nangyari. Wala tayong lusot doon. Okay? Tama lang yun dapat. Okay? And then we also have comparability. We have two kinds of comparability. Intra-comparability and inter-comparability. Pag sinabing intra-comparability, we are confirming our own... We, sorry, we are comparing our own financial statements with our own financial statements of different years. So, di ba meron tayong intra-personal tsaka inter-personal communication? So, it works that way as well. Okay? Parang ganun. So, pag intra comparability, kinocompare mo yung sarili mo sa sarili mo, magkaibang taon lang okay, 2017 versus 2016 operations ganon, okay pagka naman intercomparability, you are uh, you are comparing your financial reports to other companies within the same industry, okay, di nila ako magbabanggit ng brand name kasi YouTube to, 
pero ako sa classroom tayo magbibigay ako eh but uh, when you say comparability you are compa- inter sorry pag inter comparability you are comparing yourself with other companies pero within the same industry so kung pareho ko yung food dapat food no you cannot compare an airline company from a construction company ganun siya okay uh, ano ba yung gusto nating i-achieve sa comparability dapat kahit anong company yan consistent yung reporting para maging comparable Okay? That's why comparability will also require you consistency. Okay? Na pag sinabing cash, cash talaga yung laman noon. Hindi noong 2017, cash, sinamahan mo ng ganito. Tapos 2016, cash, sinamahan mo ng ganito. Eh, hindi na comparable yun pag ganon. Okay? Then we also have understandability. Kailangan yung financial reports natin na iintindihan kay sinong babasa. Pero may requirement. Dapat, yung babasa ng financial reports, yung babasa ng financial statements ay may basic knowledge man lang ng business and accounting. It's a two-way process, okay? Understandability can only be achieved as a two-way process, no? Uh, we will do our best as accountants to make this information very understandable, but the expectation and the reader or the users of financial information, it's, uh, they should have at least a basic understanding of what they are actually reading, or else we cannot achieve that certain level of understandability. And then lastly, timeliness. Kaya dapat quick tayo kung kailan nangyari yung transaction record agad natin para timely. Because remember, if the transactions are not timely, then the reports are not relevant anymore. If it's not timely, it's not relevant. Hello, may effect pa ba sa'yo yung mga nangyari, yung mga nakaraan taon? Pwera na lang kung di ka pa nakaka-move on. <laughs> Joke lang. Pero, always remember when it's Timely, it's relevant. So, if it's not timely, di na yun relevant. Kasi tagal nang nangyari. Baka yung effect nangyari na hindi mo pa alam. Okay? So, I hope that you are able to understand all of the things that we discussed in this video today. So, for any lesson requests, comments, and suggestions, you may respectfully write them down in the comment section below. So, uh, please bear with me until uh, the next lesson and the next lesson and the next lesson again and again okay so we're ready for lesson nine and thank you for listening very attentively uh, again if you have comments or have questions please uh put them down in the comment section below so see you or hear you <laughs> in lesson nine thank you and have a great day